Good morning and a warm welcome to our service from St Peter's Western Fable being streamed today. The great news is that we shall be able to return to church from next Sunday and Reverend Matt will be saying more about this at the end of the service. Today is Advent Sunday. And I will now light the first of the Advent candles. So we come to our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Advent Sunday. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we have our first Bible reading. Our first reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 1. <clears throat> Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware! Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes, suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Good morning. Uh, good morning from me. It's good to be here this morning. Um, and a really warm welcome if you're you know, watching online um, with us. I'm going to start by playing a game with you. So do join in on Facebook if you're, if you're playing live. I'm going to play word association. Um, and the word I want uh, to use is prepare. What do you think of when I say the word prepare? Feel free to type in a comment. Um, answer, answer. Do join in. Be interactive. It's good to join in on, on a Sunday morning. When I say the word prepare, what do you think of? The first thing I think of is preparing a meal. I love eating and I love, um, my wife is a good cook and uh, we enjoy preparing meals uh, and uh, eating with friends and family. Preparing a meal is really important if we're to enjoy that meal time. But the other things you might think of when you use the word preparing, perhaps you prepare for an exam. If you don't prepare for the exam, you might fail the exam. It's important to prepare for that exam. Maybe another thing, you might be preparing for a sports fixture. Maybe your team um, you support. If they don't prepare and train well, then they won't be victorious in the match day. Um, there's different areas. Uh, but why do we prepare? We prepare because something's important to us. We want uh, a certain outcome. We often prepare, perhaps maybe prepare the house for a special guest coming. We make sure the house is nice and tidy and clean and um, it done, it's looking all um, good. Because we're waiting for that person, that special person to arrive and be welcomed into our homes. This is Advent Sunday, as Michael has said, and this season is a season of waiting for something special. We are waiting, obviously, for... Christmas. We're counting down to Christmas, the incarnation of God coming down in human form, in the form of a baby. See, that is really special. It's a really special thing for us. So this season is also a season of watching and waiting and being ready. In our gospel reading, we're reminded of this. You see, the context of this gospel reading, though, is a reminder to be vigilant before the end times, for the age to come when Jesus will return again. Because what is an amazing reminder, perhaps, for us for our Advent time is that we are obviously in the season of waiting for the, to remember Jesus coming down as a baby. But we're also waiting as Christians in our time now, because we are in the end times. We're waiting for the second coming of our Lord. But we also know that Jesus didn't leave us empty-handed. He gave us his Holy Spirit. He is with us in spirit. So that should reassure us this Advent. But we are called in this gospel reading to um, be vigilant, to be alert and keep awake. What does that mean for us? What does that look like for us this Advent? In this season of waiting and preparing. I do think that this Advent we have a special opportunity than any other Advent that we've had in, in years gone by. Because of all the restrictions faced in Tier 2, which we're going to be in come December the 2nd, I think that there's still going to be many restrictions on our lives. And that may be really challenging for us. But let's perhaps use this as an opportunity to invest in our own relationship with God. Because if we prepare well for Advent, during Advent, then that Christmas season is ever more special and joyous. Often in our culture, um, Christmas can be a really busy season, particularly that lead up to Christmas. The buying all the presents, or making sure all the food is bought, all the gifts are wrapped, all the cards are written. And it can be a really quite, perhaps a stressful time if you're a parent, I think. And you're, particularly if you're hosting Christmas, I think it can be quite a, a build-up of stress until that uh, day is over. And then you have that Christmas lull afterwards. Because often in that culture that we live in, Christmas can be here and be over before we know it. 
But as Christians, is that right? Is that what we want to happen as Christians? I think we need to distinguish the difference between preparing for Christmas, uh, that, you know, buying the food, buying the presents, wrapping the presents, the cards, to actually preparing spiritually within ourselves. I think there's a distinguish the difference between that sort of practical preparation and that spiritual preparation. You see, this is an opportunity, this Advent, when it's dark outside and when we can't go out um, and mingle, we can't mix with in households, we can only socialise outside and it's cold, so that may be perhaps a lonelier Advent. But do not fear, do not fret, because the Lord is with us. Although we are waiting to remember that incarnation. One thing, a story I'm reminded of um, when we think about preparing for meals, uh, one story I'm reminded of in the Bible is Mary and Martha. Um, and we know that Jesus liked to share meals with friends. Um, and in the story of Mary and Martha, when they go to uh, um, the, the house for food, and Martha is busy in the kitchen preparing and getting ready for the meal, and Mary's at the feet of Jesus. And I know that often we can perhaps feel sympathetic with Martha, isn't it? It's not fair that her sister is uh, sitting doing nothing helpful other than listening to Jesus, um, which turns out is helpful. But actually, it is Martha that gets the rebuke from Jesus that she got her priorities wrong. And I'm reminded of that this, um, this year because I think one of the things that I think that God was perhaps saying to, speaking to me about what to share this morning was as we prepare for Christmas, let us be strengthened by God. In our Corinthians reading, it talked about how the church was being strengthened. And perhaps we can use this time to strengthen our relationship with God. And as we prepare for Advent, prepare for Christmas. I think the Lord was saying to me also that as we are strengthened this Advent, we do so so that at Christmas we don't end up being like Martha. And I think that's, and I don't mean to say that we don't have those uh, important jobs at Christmas where if you're cooking Christmas dinner, of course you're going to be in the kitchen. But I mean at a metaphorical level, at a spiritual level, let's not get our priorities wrong this Christmas. So in the build-up to it, let us remember to be like Mary and to sit at Jesus' feet. So how can we do that? How can we prepare well this Advent with all the restrictions, with all that is happening in our world? Well, there's been an amazing initiative taking place because of COVID. Um, over 3,000 clergy and church leaders, um, mainly from the UK, but from around the world, have got together and produced loads of resources and have shared them online and so this um, advent there's a website called online advent and on there is a huge library of um, reflections readings uh, artwork music it should be a really beautiful piece of resource that has come together and so we're really grateful for those people who have worked hard at that but also amongst that, they have produced an advent, an online advent calendar. So perhaps um, one thing I will do to help uh, um, facilitate this is on the Facebook, um, and I, I know I can direct it through the um, newsletter as well, but I can send out that, a, a link each day during December uh, of that online advent. So you can actually engage with some of these resources and spend some time uh, with you and the Lord this advent. I don't know what your tradition is at Advent, uh, what you usually do. Maybe you do a, a reflection, maybe you journey with the Lord somehow. But maybe this year we might actually take this season really seriously and set aside some time with us and the Lord. Another suggestion I heard someone give um, was perhaps you may want to read through Luke's Gospel. Uh, Luke has 24 chapters. You, might, you could perhaps could read a chapter of Luke a day during December the 1st through to December 24th. And then by the time it gets to Christmas Day, you've read through the life of Jesus Christ. And, and you're, you, you might find that that is a really helpful way to fully appreciate Christmas. But one thing, and I'll leave this with you here. May I, perhaps I can encourage us all to take some time to invest in our relationship with God this Advent. 
so that by the time Christmas comes, it is such a joyous celebration of God coming down, the incarnation of God in human form, in the form of a baby. That is such good news for us that we don't want to rush this. We want to actually invest in this time. We want to enjoy this season of Advent so that we can really enjoy Christmas because otherwise it'll be over before we know it and we have that, that lull and that's no fun for anyone. So may I encourage us to yeah, use this time wisely, to be vigilant, to keep alert of our relationship with God and not to fall into the temptations of that busyness and that rushing that this festive season, our culture allows us to fall into that trap. Amen. What we believe. We believe in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in Jesus, God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, Sarah Howard is going to lead us in prayer. On this Advent Sunday, at the end of each short prayer, the refrain following the Amen is, Come, Lord Jesus. In joyful expectation of his coming to our aid, let us pray to the Lord. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for all who work to continue your ministry while we cannot meet together physically as one body. Help us still to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come to your world as King of Nations. We pray for the parts of the world that so desperately need you as wonderful counsellor and prince of peace. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come to the suffering as saviour and comforter. We pray for all who need our prayers at this time, for any reason including physical illness, chronic pain, the exhaustion of caring for others, or the mental effects of isolation. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls, we remember all we have loved who no longer walk this earth. Give us, with all the faithful <coughs> departed, a share in your victory over evil and death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you that with all your saints and angels we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I also with you. Peace be with you. The offer tree. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own degree. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. Who embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. You opened his arms and love on the Holocaust, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
say the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a couple of notices. Um, first of all, this evening at six o'clock, um, do join us online for our Advent uh, carol service, um, which should be a really beautiful service. So do watch online um, this to enjoy that. On Saturday, we're going to have a uh, online family event, um, and thank you to Peter for organising uh, that event. It's going to um, have some. Um, some stories and some uh, music and some craft activities for sort of all ages of children. So if you've got school aged children, do look out for that. And I think there's going to be a goodie bag on the porch, our porch, um, uh, on Saturday morning. So do um, look out for that. Uh, that should be a great event. Um, and as Michael said earlier, next Sunday we're going to have uh, a, you know a congregation back in church. Isn't that good news? Um, Unfortunately, again, with being in Tier 2, there are going to be some restrictions, um, so we're going to have to be socially distanced and wearing face masks. And as we were before November, um, please do book in uh, via the church office, um, phone up the office or send Cathy an email. She won't be in on Monday. Um, her poor Sam has had to uh, have to do some self-isolating, uh, so she'll be at home on Monday, but we'll be in the office the rest of the week on Wednesday and Friday. And on Wednesday, I know it is the 2nd of December on Wednesday, but we'll have private prayer um, open from 12, 10 to 12 on Wednesday morning. So do come if you wish to be here for some private prayer. You are called and loved by God the Father and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace and love be yours in abundance. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ.